Where do you want to go to lunch today? I asked our son Ben on his 14th birthday. He was seated at the kitchen table inhaling a second bowl of frosted flakes. How about buffalo wild wings? He responded in between spoonfuls of cereal. Sounds good. Do you want to bring your presents with us? Why can't I open them back here? He asked. Because you're going to your mom's afterwards, remember? I finished loading the dishwasher and sat down beside him. His nod signified remembrance, and he drank the rest of the milk from the bowl, a habit I chose to ignore. This sharing of birthdays and holidays was not unusual for him and his sister. Both parents had remarried when the children were small, and they have said to have few memories of celebrating special occasions any other way. I suppose in a way that's both good and bad. Ben was just five years old when his father and I met, and I can still recall his crooked little smile with several missing teeth. He was such a gentle soul and gave his love freely while his father and I were dating. Two years later on our wedding day, he slid a heart-shaped plastic ring under my bathroom door and shyly asked if I would wear it. Sorry. This innocent gesture touched me so deeply and nearly choked on grateful tears. A difficult medical history made it uncertain if I would ever have children. But here I'd been given the amazing opportunity to love and parent. They were such wonderful little people and I knew that I was fortunate that they accepted me so quickly. Bonding with Ben was not only easy, it was fun. We spent hours playing sardines, his favorite version of hide and seek and his giggles upon finding him were contagious. He loved learning silly jokes and camp songs and I was thrilled to supply them. His creativity amazed me and his imaginative play always included wielding a sword or a plastic gun as our faithful hero. But for as many times as he saved the universe on our behalf, it wasn't uncommon for him to sneak into our room during a thunderstorm or whisper quietly in my ear if he had wet the bed. He grew into my heart faster than I expected, and for the first time in my life, made me feel like a mother. The boy that sat before me now was tall and thin, with a hint of stubble appearing here and there in his chin. But his brown eyes were the same, and I knew if I looked deep enough, I would see the little boy inside him. When he returned from his mother's house, he brought home a surprise. His mother had found the video of his birth, and he wanted to share it with me. This circumstance may sound strange to others, but his mom and I have a unique relationship. From the very beginning, I respected her role as a mother and did all that I could to honor her position. It cannot be easy to share your kids with another woman, but she was always gracious in doing so. The joint custody arrangement was a 50-50 schedule, so communication was imperative. We frequently discussed issues regarding the kids and collaborated on decisions before taking action. Schedules were agreed upon in advance and we were mutually considerate regarding revisions. These things helped to make our co-parenting relationship successful and even allowed us to foster a friendship. But still, this was a pretty private thing to share and I was torn between feeling honored and feeling intrusive. My hesitation was halted as Ben shoved the old VHS tape into the player. He was excited to see it again and sat close to me on the couch. Soon, images of my husband as a younger man appeared. At 24, he looked so young to be a father of two. Our sweet little Emily emerged at the scene as her two-year-old self, and I marveled at recognizing expressions that she still uses today. And when his mother filled the screen with her swollen belly, I was reminded once again how the children began as a part of her. The struggle to free him from her was great, but when she finally released Ben into the world for his first breath, I imagined that a part of her must have left with him. Being that these were happier times in their marriage, she probably never envisioned someday being separated from her babies for nearly half of their childhood. I felt my admiration for her go deeper as she'd never expressed jealousy or resentment for their time spent with me, even though that meant time spent away from her. 
I honestly don't know if the tables were turned if I could be so generous. Tears of gratitude threatened my eyes as I realized that this life I live now, loving these children as my own, was made, part, was made possible in part by her. Ben popped the video out once it was over and I gave him a long hug, whispering in his ear, I'm so thankful for the day you were born. <laughs> Sorry. He returned my embrace with arms that were no longer a child's, and I was grateful for who he was, part of a man I loved and a woman I admired. While it wasn't my birthday, I knew the gift received that day was for me.